Bag alert, major bag alert. Uh, bag alert, major burp, 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 burp. Bag alert. All right, John, it's no time for another mailbag. Can you tell it's a Jewish white guy? <laughs> it's me, DJ Khaled. <laughs> uh, I've watched, I, I'm actually balls deep right now in the Seinfeld reruns. I mean, it's just, what a show. So good, right? <laughs> what, uh, I, I don't know if George quite gets enough credit. He is, I mean, obviously Jerry's the star, but I think George plays a pretty major role in the show. At least the season I watched. I've thought about this because I, you know, I've had this conversation with our buddy AJ writing a lot. Like if you had to get rid of one character, he, he sent me one time a couple of years ago, this thing that was like, you know, you get a dollar, you have like $5 to build your Seinfeld roster, you know? Yeah. And I think I put George and his dad on my roster with putty and Jerry might've been my group. Yeah. Um, but I do think I've thought about this. I think the hardest, like Kramer is unique. Elaine's perfect. Jerry's Elaine's, great. Elaine's really good. I think George, as great as Kramer is, I think Elaine and George, while a little redundant because they both get angry at stupid shit, are kind of more critical to the feeling of the show. George is perfect. Absolutely perfect. To me, if you had to pick... He might be the most pick. valuable player, honestly. Because Jerry, actually, anybody could kind of... I mean, he's great. He's great. Yeah, but, but the thing is with the chicks, he's got to be good looking enough and, you know, part of But it. he's kind of the straight man in the whole thing. No, I know, but he, but his look, he's able to pull off like still with some babes. Yeah, yeah. There, I'm just saying like specifically uh, maybe I'm talking more about the actor. I'm just saying George is irreplaceable. No, I, no, I hear you. I I think it's closer to being like uh I I think George from the casual person on the outside views as a role player. I think it's much closer to like Clay and Steph than it would be like Steph and like uh, Jordan Poole or something, you know? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he's George is a star in the show. He makes star. Jerry better because Jerry Way gets to better. react to him. George is incredible. I didn't realize what a great performance George Costanza just has on a on a consistent. It's basis why it was hard for him to do another show. I mean, nobody really did another show afterwards except for Veep for for um uh yeah for uh, Elaine for Elaine Newman Dennis, got the but... cameo in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yeah, harder. I mean, yeah, no, George. I George just did another show where he was George. I think it's been Larry's anyway. voice. Larry's voice is pretty funny. Randomly coming in when Larry when, when Larry David will do like the yeah. voice of somebody yelling from the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, the uh, nokidhungry.org slash ham. The fundraiser we've got going. Get in it. We put ten thousand dollars in. Tito's put five thousand. Puesto, fantastic Mexican food, put two thousand in. And now we want you to join us through the rest of the year, John, in our fundraising campaign. Yep, get in it right now, nokidhungry.org slash ham. Donate. You can write off all tax deductibles. It's very easy. All right, through the end of the year, as always, we thank our sponsor, Tito's Handmade Vodka. Time to dive in the mailbag. Very easy. You go to iTunes. You leave us a review. Five stars in that review. You leave us a question. And that question, you can put whatever you want. Can it be sports-related, not be sports-related? We always love when you throw in your favorite bar. Support a local business. So let us begin, John, with... Uh, this about the Seahawks rebuild. You guys are pretty good at doing what you're doing. I enjoy Middlecoff's sexual metaphors sometimes, like when he talks about the Rams just whipping their nuts out, or in this case, being balls deep in Seinfeld. Uh, you guys made a video about the Seahawks just blowing it up after the season. I'm assuming it's Jimmy's last year with the Niners. How crazy would it be if the Seahawks blew it up and signed Jimmy Garoppolo to be their quarterback while they do the rebuild? They could have a starting quarterback who's not horrible. He's not the guy you want for the next five to ten years, but Seahawks as a destination for Jimmy G. Feels a hard one to see. Uh, part of it because I think he keeps playing just serviceable. He's going to have a trade market. They don't have any money, you know, in terms of cap space. Or I just, picks, really. I guess they have second rounders, probably. Yeah, but even like, I mean, what's is even now, if Jimmy got traded, he's still probably going for like a third, fourth. You know, and Jimmy's not getting to me a second round pick. Do you think? If he just uh, plays like I he's think, played the last several nah, weeks? I don't, probably not. I don't think so. Like, wouldn't End the of a just second, take like maybe. a fourth? Yeah, I mean, they would take anything, really. They're not in a position to say no. At the end of the day, they'll take somebody's offer. Let's say he did have a bunch of options. Do you think he's uh, trading him to Seattle? Uh, well, I mean, he, I don't think Kyle would be opposed to it necessarily because I think Kyle would look at it like I can beat him. There's a reason I replaced him. So I don't think it's for him, you know, like, we're not trading him in the division. I don't think he looks at Jimmy that way. Now, to me, it wouldn't be crazy for Seattle. I don't know if it totally like they would trade Russell, get multiple picks back. They're not. Are they getting Daniel Jones back in that trade? 
It doesn't no. really make sense for them. No. So, you know, I, it probably doesn't make sense for them to then draft a rookie quarterback and have that guy play right away. So even though I don't think this happens, I actually, when you kind of unfold it, I don't think it's as crazy as it sounds. Yeah, the Texans, there's just going to be a lot of teams interested that I think are. It's a if you're much Jimmy, more... would you rather play for the Texans or the Seahawks? We don't know who the C. We don't, you know, if Pete's, let's say Pete's there. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of moving parts. I, I think there are just going to be people that know him, that believe in him, that are going to want him. And hell, Denver could strike out. Like, I, I think there would just be some better football, dis- you know, situations. Uh, next up, this is from B Rush, longtime listener, five star pot with all the buzz on the new coaching hires. Around college football, like Lincoln Riley and uh, Kelly. Oh, Brian Kelly. It's getting me excited to find out who the Raiders might hire as their head coach. Any realistic thoughts that come to mind of someone who might be a great fit or hire? Well, I mean, I'd bail on Rick Passaccia, John, if he gets them to the playoffs. Oh, were you about to yell somebody's name? Who's got it better than us? Nobody. He took a massive pay cut. I mean, they thought about firing him last year. Now, he's come storming back. But I'd say Harbaugh has a little, like, Trumpian, Portnoy pettiness to him, you know? that I'm not saying he's, like, out on Michigan because he's clearly given him his all. But would it totally shock you that if he bounced after this season? Uh, well, he has talked to the Raiders. The Raiders have been interested before. I think the question would be, does he think what he did was the perfect storm? Or does he think it's the beginning of what is next, where he can beat Ohio State for the next, you know, six years or something like that? But there would be something to, you know what? I just climbed this mountaintop. I did what I came here to do. How can it get better than this? Uh, he left Stanford after he won the Orange Bowl, albeit, you know, he went to the 49ers. So it's he's already done that once. He hadn't been to the NFL as a head coach before. But I could see that. Yes. I don't think that's crazy. Yeah. Some I don't think that's crazy. There, he took Stanford some to the top and it was like, all right, that's where that's with luck and that's as far as they go, you know. Um, I don't think it's crazy. Leave them I, before they leave you. I could see. I mean, that, that to me is a, it's a pretty big swing. But I think Doug Peterson would make a lot of sense. A guy that can coach quarterbacks, a guy that's had success as a head coach, a guy that's worked in a crazy market who's just used to it. I think Doug Peterson. If you're leaving Rich, to you, doesn't he make a ton of sense for Derek? Yeah, I think he makes. I think one thing with Doug, even though it ended weird in Philly, feels like Doug's just solid. And I don't yeah. mean he can't win. I, I mean, I he won a championship. He's a normal guy. He's yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just, some, he's stable. Stable is the word I'm looking for. He's just stable. He, he doesn't need, like, Doug Peterson was around, like, Marino and Favre as a player. Like, he's not some ego man. Like, he's, he's been around the He used to the do a radio time. show. Remember when he was Favre's backup? Yeah. He just, like, go to Brett the bar and hang do out. It? Yeah, he just go to the bar and hang out. <laughs> He hosted the show, I think, was part of the story. Oh, that was it, yeah. Uh, next up, this podcast is a monster listen for sports info and entertainment. Connected, hilarious. Been listening for two plus years, never miss an episode. My question is, how many college recruits can Lincoln Riley take from the porthole versus uh, how many he can offer a full ride? What's the max number for both? Thank you again for all the entertainment. He can hey, do Ruth. whatever he wants. As, long, as many scholarships as he has is as many people as he can take. So if he's got... 25 scholarships. He could take 25 guys out of the portal if he wanted. All the scholarships are the same. One year scholarship. So, um, yeah, he could do whatever well, he when wants. I, when I take that guy, so let's say a guy I'm at Alabama. I redshirted in two th- in 2019. I played. Does 20 not count for anybody? 20 is a free year. So if you were a senior in 20, you got to play again this year. Anything okay, else you were in 20, you got another. Okay, just, so let's say let's say, let's say I'm a freshman. Eligibility standpoint. I'm a freshman in 2021 this season, and I'm at Alabama. And I redshirted, and I realized Nick's like, you know, you're not going to play at minimum for two more years. And I transfer. Do I then have four more years to play for? Like, does my if clock? If I was just, a redshirt, yeah. Does yep, my clock when I transfer just stay what it is wherever I go? Right. Mm-hmm. So if you redshirted this year, you get one free transfer without sitting out a year. So you could transfer to Caleb Williams. Didn't transfer this year. Didn't redshirt at Oklahoma didn't play in 2020, right? He was a true freshman. He's got four years to play three moving forward. So, yes, then he could transfer, play right away, and have four years, three more years of playing left in him. So I I think you have to do a little balancing act. Spencer Rattler, here's another example. He redshirted, right, two years ago? Yep. Then was a redshirt freshman this year? 
Is yep. that right? Uh, no, he's a multi-year star. I mean, 2020 didn't count, but he started in 2020. Did he redshirt the year before that? Uh, uh, I thought he redshirted one year. This is Jalen Hurts' second year. So Jalen Hurts was a starter three years ago. So, so he, he redshirted. redshirted. Yeah. Okay, so he redshirted. Then 2020, he was a redshirt freshman. So, he, I'm sorry, 2019, he redshirted, okay? So it doesn't count. 2020, he comes out and plays as a redshirt freshman. Luckily, right? that year doesn't count. Right. So he could, in theory, transfer with three years still left to play and play right away. To me, what happens like when sophomores and juniors transfer and they have, you know, two or three year, you know, two or one year left, wouldn't you rather go if you're a big program with younger guys? Because you For are sure. kind of living short. For sure. Time. But you, yeah, you could, but you could bring in a guy who played as a, uh, I mean, you could bring in a guy that was a senior this year that like played his fourth year of college football, but has a free year. So you could do that. But, but that absolutely. used to happen a lot with the graduate transfers. With grad transfers. You, yeah. you knew what you were getting. That part's not weird. Um, it's just well, with the grad, grad transfer, grad I had transfers. to give him a scholarship, right? They got a scholarship. Yeah, too. you got it. Yeah, you, but but now it's like you can play a guy who's played. Grad transfers used to have played three years of football, but had another year of foot playing, but had been in college for four years, right? Is this impacting college basketball a lot? Are guys moving around at rapid rates in college basketball? Uh, yeah, yeah. Are we only scratching the surface? The difference is, is it, in college isn't basketball. Is this going to be nuts in the next? Like, well, I five think years? I think we're I think like what Washington's doing this year, where the where an established quarterback looks like Jay Kaner, our guy, is going with the coach. Like that's yeah, it is going to be the free year of eligibility is what really and it's really crazy right now because you had. The free year, and then you add to the free year the free transfer year. So, um, but the free but transfer year is not changing, right? Right. I'm saying you've got two crazy things going on. You've got the new free transfer year, and you've got a year that didn't count against your. So eligibility you're saying last like year. three or four years when we get farther enough away from 2020, and everyone's just on a normal cycle. Maybe it's a little less crazy. No, I think it'll still to- be it'll still be crazy. It's just this year you have more players because you have more guys that were. In co- like more people were eligible to play college football this year than normally. Doesn't Chip Kelly? Didn't Chip Kelly have like five or six transfers starting on his team this year? A lot of teams had a lot of guys, yeah. yeah. Especially guys that change jobs and move up, bump up a level, or even if they don't bump up a level. But that's where you take. Eh, I'll just take my four best players from Buffalo. Well, that's what Dabo said. We'll never do that because they don't do junior college transfers. They just believe in the culture. But they're not junior college guys. No, I know, but they haven't done that yet. I wonder if you eventually have to change. Because even Saban t- has a taken coordin- A coordinator comes, maybe, and brings a quarterback with him. You know? Sa- Saban has a, a Ohio State wide receiver. He had Dickerson, who traded for, transferred from Florida State. To me, you got to be open-minded to everything. I don't care who Just, you are. No, nah, I mean, who's turning down solutions? All right. Moving along, John. This is from TJ. Love the show. Always putting up great content. Hopefully a non-sports mailback question is okay. Absolutely. They're welcome here. I heard you guys talking about Nick Saban jamming out to give me shelter after every game. I travel a lot for work and I've always played the same song during takeoff. Is there a song either of you turn on while you're doing something? Maybe Nick and I are crazy. TJ. I can't believe he didn't put the song that he plays. That oh. is devastating. I mean, I need to know the song during takeoff. I she mean, packed her bags last night. Pre-flight. Maybe it's Elton. Yeah. I mean, to me it would be, is it something kind of negative? As you're flying off, or is it something positive? I don't know. I don't Does he have, have anxiety? Maybe. I mean, do you not listen when they tell you to turn the equipment off? Do they Definitely do not. That? I have not put my phone in airplane mode in four years. <laughs> no. Because you know it's a complete lie. Oh, I is it? breakdowns on YouTube. Yeah, it's a complete lie. Then That's why, the, I don't, why I don't would think they, they lie hammer. about it? I don't know. Just out of principle. They wanted your shit off. So you were attentive. <laughs> so your phone doesn't ring? No, I think so you're attentive if something happens on... You know, as you're taking off, something goes wrong. You can listen. But I can't get a signal. Nothing's happening anyway. But I'm saying if you're listening to music, isn't that part of it? Like, you yeah, turn I just off download your... the music to my phone. Well, I know. Well, that's why no one turns it off anymore. But, but I'm mean, saying I don't need to. I don't quite get what the angle is. Is it were they afraid that it would interfere with some equipment, but it doesn't actually? That would be my question. I didn't dive deep enough on it. I just remember reading or watching on a YouTube. It was a complete lie. And I was like, I believe it because I've done it before and nothing happened. So is everyone. Unless the pilot's in there like, ah, fuck, someone's got their phone on, whatever. It, like, it doesn't really affect anything. Maybe that's, yeah, you need maybe. a pilot. Anyway, uh, any song, do you go to like a, a go-to? 
I, I I'm a pretty uh, musically just all over the place. Like I just whatever I hear that I'm like, and I kind of gravitate. I, I'm always moving. I'm sticking and move. I'm like a Floyd Mayweather in the ring with music. Like I I get on kicks and then I gravitate towards something else. And it's like a, I don't stick for something for long. I think it's hard. I'm with you. I think we're similar in that way. I don't like to have too much control over the music because I'll just listen to the same 25 songs if I do. You know what I mean? And that gets boring. So I like I let Pandora choose for me. That said. Uh, probably two or three years ago. Uh, maybe it was last year, actually, after the Michael Jordan doc. Everyone always pays attention to Sirius, the song that they play for the Bulls' introductions. Yeah. But the song that never gets enough attention from the Bulls is after the introductions, as the players are walking onto the floor and dapping each other up, and Michael and Magic are shaking hands, and the referees are testing their whistles, and the crowd is up, and the lights are uh, the lights have now come up. They played Van Halen right now is the name of the Van Halen song. I, I can't play it for you because then you know, YouTube heard, would take this video it, down. Yeah. I took the first, I think it's like a minute of that song before the words come in. It's got like a piano that starts and then the guitar and then the electric guitar. I looped that minute into like a 10 minute file. And sometimes I'll start my day with that. I haven't done it in a while. This question actually reminded me of it that I, for a while I was just like, get the morning coffee, just put that thing on. And it's not like headbangers, just kind of get your mind right. So that, that would be my answer to that question. I would say Van Halen's right now, the first minute, just fucking fantastic. That's a good one. I might, after we finish this, walk down to the gym. And if I do, I'm going to think I'm just going to listen to Gimme Shelter the whole way there. That's that feels serious. like if Nick will do it, uh, that's, I don't think he's randomly listening to that song. If it's good yeah. enough for Saban, <laughs> I think it's good enough for everybody else. Uh, 808 state fan feed the kids donation made from Hawaii. Love the pod. Have two kids myself, three and a half years old, a little over two shave it or save it. Love it. Buzzed it. Clipper last myself at 21, 22 shaved it at 24, 25 years old. Could have done it at 20, 21. If I had someone tell me told John to come to Kauai to golf instead of Maui on IG, but nightlife here is non-existent. Uh, one day keep up the good work. Love the blend of the topics. Niner fans since the early 80, since the late 80s, early 90s. Born in 82. Since seen a bunch of Niners on the island growing up. They used to visit post-Super Bowl. Old school QB challenge used to be on the island. Even the older guys. Ooh. Golden years like Plunkett and Co. Love it. There you go. 808 you Deli in uh, Kihei. Amazing pudding. Maui is just... Maui's the shit. I mean, when you're just there, you're like... This place is awesome. I remember me and Jeff, we His played brother. a little golf, and then we took a day off. We were there for like six days. Then we're going to play golf again. He's like, let's go get some lunch. Maybe it was like early lunch, probably like 10, 30, 11. He's like, I saw on the internet the number one food truck for Mahi uh, Fish Burritos is down the street from where we're going to play golf at Wailea. So we go down there. It's just this truck on the side. We had it, and it's like $10 a burrito, and it just melts in your mouth. You're like, God. The water's right there. Mm. You're like, how do you beat this place? I know, so good. <laughs> how do you? And I know the the uh, the East Coast elites. They got their spots over there. You just don't. It's a long. Hawaii's a long way, right? If you live in New York, and just like their places like, are a long way for us. Yeah, know? it just I just Hawaii just is sweet. Uh, next up from Mark, he says, "Best sports show out there." The Search Bar in Chula Vista lets me get my Tito's on. The search bar in Chula Vista. Here's the question. Would you rather, would you rather the 49ers win one playoff game this year and are bounced or that they use this year for uh, developing Trey Lance, but did not make the playoffs? Playoffs. Yeah. Your playoffs one, one and done in the playoffs this year. Well, I was just thinking like that playoff weekend, January, their last game's the ninth. So that following week, that's a really big deal. It's a really big deal to be in that mix and not like last year when you're the, uh, remember the Bears? Like most teams in the playoffs, unless you have a major injury, like you talk that week like you got a chance to win, mm -hmm. right? You're not, you're usually not like a 15 point underdog. If the Niners played the Cowboys and somehow got to like 10 and 7 and the Cowboys were 11 and 6, what, what would you guess the spread would be? Like Cowboys minus three? Like it'd be a, it's not like they're going to be a minus eight. Yeah, two and a half. Yeah, so it's like, that's a big it, – it'd be a really, really big deal, guy, for Kyle to make the playoffs this yeah, year. It and it keeps now, you, the consumer, interested. Yeah. Ask me again after two weeks after they lose, and I'm like, ah! Uh, idiot855. That's his name. Uh, only sports pod I can stand. Hey, guys, how about calling your new segment 
cough it or quaff it. That's not bad. Doesn't include my name, though, so I hate it. Uh, but that's a good name. Cough it or quaff it. Instead of shave it or save it. Anyway, uh, I just have one question. Why does Middlecoff hate Gabe Kapler so much? It's like the guy who ran over his childhood pet or something. Keep up the good work. I don't hate. I had nothing. I, I don't hate anybody. There's, there's, there's no hate in my heart. You're not toward buying any, it toward any human being that I've never <laughs> okay. met. Okay. And honestly, even people I met, I try to spend less and less time getting angry about anybody. I just, I, 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 I have a hard time with people that I think are fake. And it's why I, th I think most politicians like I, I th there's not a worse job to me in the world than being a politician because your whole life is is fake. You, j you say one thing when you actually and I understand part of life. You can't always just be blunt and tell the truth. I think everything the guy says, I feel like, is he, is he putting on an act? Clearly, they had a really good season. No, it's weird because I want them to be good, but I want him to fail. <laughs> and I just I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll just I be wrong. Uh, but yep. I do know. I think Farhan's great. It's gonna it is. It's going to be harder and harder because I don't know what a manager does anymore. Manage people. Manage people. As uh, a friend of mine in baseball told me. Like, well, he manages people. Valder21 says, uh, five stars. Haberman singing Bag Alert deserves, deserves to be on my Spotify Rewind this year. Best song in the business. <laughs> See the song that John mocked. Why mock uh, your version of yes, it? Yes, of course. As I, I deserve to be mocked. I can't sing. You guys have been on fire with the locks. Well, thanks for putting cat. 11 to 12. Thanks for putting cash in the pockets of this teaching intern. My question is, what do you think you will do with your winnings? Any shot we can get some cool ham merch, hoodies or beanies for the winter maybe, so we can show our support? Love you guys. Be sure to check out Horrocks if you are ever in East Lansing. Well, I was thinking about getting to like, you know, 12 grand, so like six each and just like, I don't know, taking a girl on like a Aspen vacation for the weekend or something. I've already had that in my mind. <laughs> But you know, there's a big weekend, guy. We got a thousand dollars on the table. We'll be down to thirty five hundred before you even blink, and then we start doing you splitting it. We're like, ah, we don't have as much as we thought. I was thinking, how big would we go on the Super Bowl? Put a little aside and then go big on the Super Bowl. But we got to get there. That's what got I was it. thinking in the midst of an eleven game win streak. Well, do you know it's already crossed lost. my mind? Like, make a couple big bets during the playoffs, college football playoff. You know, the Super Bowl, two five thousand dollar bet on the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's. I mean, exactly. But uh, all of a oh sudden, we God. got forty seven grand in there. <laughs> But right now, I I know I've learned one thing in life. You start spending money you don't have, and uh, uh, the money you think you have can become money you definitely are never getting very quickly. So we got to lock in here. Truth. I mean, are these college bets we've been doing to me? It's a little, uh, a little risky. Danny G says, "Love the pod. You put out some great content every week. I look forward to listening. Thank you, Danny." Question regarding the Niners. Assuming Jimmy's gone, where do you think they should spend the cap space that becomes available? Corner and D-line depth seems like obvious needs. Perhaps a veteran backup behind Trey. Any impact free agents come to mind? What they might look to sign. Relatedly, any Niner contracts uh, coming up that may not choose to resign. I sure hope building through the draft isn't the main strategy next year. My favorite bar is the Lube Room in Dorrington, CA. Highway 4 just before Bear Valley. I'm afraid, but I feel obligated to Google this. The lube room? <laughs> is this a real place? And is it? Yeah, it's just a saloon. Here's the lube room saloon. Pretty good little, uh, pretty cool little website. Yeah. I love a good saloon with snow on top of it. Honestly, we didn't even listen to his question, but... Uh, uh, oh, building through the draft. Yeah, to who who should the Niners not bring back? Oh, where should they spend their cap space if Jimmy's not back? Well, they're going to need a corner, right? Maybe two. Uh, and maybe buy an offensive lineman. I, you just can always do that. I, w I, would, I would never have any issue with buying offensive, defensive linemen, and corners. I would look at those two positions. Because to me, Kyle is going to figure it out with skill guys. I'll tell you what this. About, what I, about buying a tight end? Yeah. To go with George. If they're... I've heard... I text a buddy in the league about Ertz. I'm like, do you think Ertz is going to be worth... Is he a multi-year contract at this point? He's like, I think he's probably a one-year moving forward. Would you? Would Ertz... Love Ertz. You get him for like one... I think five seems cheap. Seems but, too low. But I don't know if he's as good anymore. And he can't block. I'd do one $5 million. Hey, you want to come home? Problem is like... It's like, well, you want to win a championship? He's like, I already won a ring. Walk-off touchdown, Super Bowl, Patriots, remember? So it's like, if I'm Ertz, 
I've already accomplished the main step. Well, I'm trying to rack up some cash. Here's now, the thing: he's you making, want to play for good teams. Five isn't nuts. I mean, he's making eight and a half this year. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get a reduction. Yeah, I like that idea a lot, actually. Um, Brent Jones, you know, was like a father figure for him growing up. Like they're close, him and Brent. Robert Tanyan's a free agent. Tours ACL though. Remember? Mike Gasicki, they're bringing him back. I don't hate Gasicki. I like that, but I, to me, Gasicki feels like he might be he might cost a little something. Something. Yeah, I think he will. Um, was there another part of this? Oh, I, you know, veteran quarterback. I mean, I love a. a, a, a you know, I don't know that they need to spend there because Kyle does pretty well getting backup production out of backup quarterbacks. Yeah, to me, can you get the equivalent of like what the Bills did this year? A Mitch type guy for three million dollars. I'm cool. Yeah. With, would or would you rather just have like an eight hundred thousand sure. dollar guy? Yeah, like I'd rather just yeah you know, draft a guy in the I don't know, find yeah, somebody Trey else's gets, whatever. Trey gets hurt, you're fucked. So yeah, I'm not. Uh. This is from MJW 49ers. Great seeing you guys blown up. Even better that you're getting the money bag for the best vodka around. Question. McGlinchey isn't the player we all hoped he'd be. Jalen Moore seems solid. I think he has upside. What do you think the Niners would net in an offseason trade? Would they get a second or a third? Shed the salary and allocate it towards a cornerback. McGlinchey. He has a torn quad. So, so not a second? Is that what you're saying? It, I, I just remember being in some free agent meetings when you kind of go around the room and, you know, my job, you know, as much as I was a scout was always to be like, well, his injury history, Middlecoff. And I just, you know, well, he's got concussion, this torn quad. Now, obviously, McGlinchey's a famous enough player. Right? Most people would like, he has a major injury. That's a pretty big major injury. Torn quad for a guy who I wouldn't exactly call uh, has Trent Williams feet. I mean, I hate to say it. Because I do think he's his heart's in the right place, and he's a solid player. And he, he we had him on the podcast a couple years ago, and he's I want to like him a lot. I just don't know how good he is, you know. Like I don't know. Like I, I think next year will probably be his last year on the Niners. I do think he's an NFL starter, um, at a key position. Yeah, I do think. He, do you think he's a starter? Yeah, yeah, I do too. And and I think the he's your guy, and you know what you're getting with him. I think it makes sense to keep him around, depending on what you pay him. I think if you look back and not you went, worry about they got, that, they got anymore. McGlinchey in the third round. That's a good pick. It was like, where'd you get McGlinchey? Ninth overall. Yeah, I know. As Colton Miller, he's quieted a little. Uh, this is from Super Sleeper. Love the pod as much as I love winning money. Now I can do both and listen. Keep up the hot streak. Well, thank you. Uh, new streak starts today with Debo and Bosa playing the way they are. It seems like big contracts are coming up. Curious to hear what you think about the priorities will be to keep this team together. And if they are able to dish out contracts with Trent, George, Fred, Eric, D4, Jimmy, all making big money. Cool story. My fiance and I are having a destination, maybe wedding in Key West. We were down there last week doing some planning and we watched the Niners Rams game at the Conch Republic. Great bar and seafood. Bartender was a diehard Eagles fan and told me Jimmy G was at the bar this summer. Was a super nice guy. Left a massive tip for everyone at the bar doing. Oh, period. So Jimmy was great. Left a massive tip for everyone at the bar. Nice, Jimmy. Uh, anyway, for the wedding, we're doing his and hers drinks. Here is my Tito's based drink. Tropical Tito's mule, one and a half ounces of Tito's vodka, one ounce of passion fruit juice puree, one ounce of lime juice, two ounces of pineapple juice, six ounces of ginger beer. Keep up the great content. Always supporting from the East coast in Providence, Rhode Island. Mm, that sounds like a good drink. I think Jimmy's good people. You know, he's no, no one's ever questioned too. Jimmy being good people. And I think every time I said this a few weeks ago, every time I watch Jimmy do a press conference, I think he handles all of that comes with being a quarterback really well. The criticism, the spotlight. See, Grant asked him after he won the game on Sunday. He's like, Jimmy, the last question was like, uh, Jimmy, there was a report this morning by rap sheet that you're going to get traded after the season. And Jimmy's like, just one. Jimmy was like, yeah, man, I haven't seen that. Uh, it just like, it kind of sucks. Like I, also, I like Grant, rap- but I think sometimes just like, God damn. The, the rap sheet report is like, I, I, I don't understand why that's being treated as news. Well, cause I don't think he, I think you run out, you know, it's like, us I guess in the I summer. understand. It's like I us do. in the summer. Like there's not as much to talk about, right. From like uh, May to probably July. I think like week 
seven through about 12 for some of the guys, the insiders, like what's rap sheet bringing to the table like this Sunday morning? Like what really is there? Like, you know, my, my favorite part of Sunday morning is the last five minutes before the games when it's like Glazer, here's who's in, here's who's out. It's like, I know I read it on Twitter. Yeah. Nick Chubb is in. I know he's he warmed up an hour ago. Yeah, we see it, buddy. They 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 already put out their inactives. We, yeah, the team the team tweets out who's playing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, who's who are you keeping together? I mean, Trent Stan, Georgia Stan, D Ford's not. Jimmy's not. I would try to get Armstead to take a pay cut. D Ford, you're kind of stuck with his contract. Jimmy's gone. Yeah. I mean, I think their their core really next year is Trent. Is there a Fred Warner restructure coming? Uh, no, not a year in. I don't think. Unless Al Shazier, you know, does he have twenty five tackles Sunday? Is he Al Shire? <laughs> it's a hard name to say, but I like him. Fifty one, good player. I mean, the real question is how much does Debo get? You know, let's see if how healthy Debo can stay. I'm not opposed to playing another year on a con- contract year. What's contract? the uh, tag coming in 23? The problem is that's not Parag. They always try to get a cheap deal. I think they'll yeah. try to get him for like $35 million guaranteed well, this year. Like as he's as he's like recovering from a hammy, that's when you sign him. And then the Niners will treat out. We just got right. the uh, – we just we just signed the highest running back contract in the history of the league. Try to give themselves credit. <laughs> <laughs> that kid Monarch says, love the pod, five stars. If Mayock gets let go, do y'all see – who do y'all see as possible GM replacements? Heard both of you speak highly of Adam Peters. Would he take the Raiders job? Is it appealing? No. To which? No, I can't say no. I mean, I I don't know if he'd take it or not. Is it appealing? I think it's a little chaotic. It's just, I'd be a little nervous. Yeah, I think the one thing that would make it appealing is absolute control. If Mark hires you first and lets you hire the coach, for sure. And that's, right. a, ve- that's a very appealing general manager job. So, yeah, I, if if... If he hires you first, I think it's very, very NFL appealing. Look, Adam Peters was trying to get the job for Matt Rule last year. So if Mark Davis is going to hire him and hand him the keys to the franchise, and the one thing is in the NFL, it's not the Oakland A's, right? You do have – every team has money to spend, and clearly the Raiders have spent money under Gruden's time. You do have a quarterback on the roster. But to me, if he hires a coach first, Gruden style – That person has power. Then to me, it's a little less appealing. Agreed. Much less appealing, actually. I would say I wouldn't take it if I'm a quote unquote actually, GM unless I, I, I actually, know the guy. I think I, I'm expecting package deal. I would Lewis love to see Doug. Harbaugh's GM. Uh, Balky. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's Lewis Riddick, Riddick. You just mentioned him. Package deal. I don't. What if Harbaugh just like, yeah, we're just gonna go GMless. I mean, it's not. And Harbaugh would be like, it's not even like I want to scout. I don't even like that. But uh, I just don't want a GM talking to me. <laughs> Z says, uh, do you guys think the Shanahan offense of a hard-nosed running back has led to the team's recent years of injury proneness? Like Kittle, running backs always going down, offensive linemen getting hurt. How many wins do you think the Niners would have this year if they did what the Patriots did, went all in on Mac Jones? I know his ceiling is lower and in the long run, uh, is lower in the long run, but from what you have seen from Mac this year, is he better or worse than you thought? Also, can I get a Cowboy steak? What's their biggest problem? I've never liked paying Dak, and my biggest fears are turning into realities. Let's rattle through. Do you think the hard-nosed offense has led to injuries? Yes, I do, and I've thought that for a while. You? Yes, for sure. But I love the offense. You just need 12 running backs. How many more wins would the Niners have if Mac Jones was the quarterback, and is he better or worse than you thought? Maybe I, a win, but I don't think him. The way Jimmy's played the last couple of weeks, there's no difference between the players. Yeah, I don't even know if they'd have a win more. Um, he has been a little better than I thought. I thought he'd be solid. I didn't think he'd win like this, but he went to New England. So that helps a lot. Yeah. I mean, some of their wins, this is by far the biggest game. I mean, you know, there's supposed to be 25 mile an hour wins Monday night football in Buffalo. No, I did not know that. We'll see. Like let's, he's beat up on a, on a Titans team leaking oil. The Browns were in shambles. He beat the jets twice. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. Cause I've been impressed. They, he throws for 150 yards a game, their defense and run game. Let's, let's see Buffalo. Because I could see a, a Mac come back to Jesus moment. Uh, I agree. It's a long year. I guess it's, it's a come long back to earth, three years. Not a, not a come comedy. back to Jesus. <laughs> come back. Come back to Earth. Talk to Jesus. Two separate. You days. were. You went to the church every <laughs> every Sunday as a child. Please, son, come back to Jesus. Give up the drugs. Come back to Jesus. 
Um, and the uh, Seahawks, what's uh, sorry, uh, wrong silver. Cowboys, what's their biggest problem? Uh, I'd say I they're not know. proven winners. That'd be my first issue with them. And I'm not sure if they're good enough. I don't, I'm not sure if they're well enough coached. And I'm not sure if their quarterback's a primetime guy. If you're talking about like winning a championship, I've had people slide into my DMs just because a lot of like Eagles, Giants people just from the NFC East stuff follow me. And they have said, like, you know, Dak Prescott gets a little bit of a pass. He's got a little Stafford quality. The better the team and the bigger the game, sometimes he has not played as well. Something to keep an yeah. eye on. Yeah. I, I think there's something too. They're just missing something. I think part of it is does that team really know how to win? Because he does, I think Dak has this more even than Stafford. People want to really root for Dak. He's a yeah. very likable guy. You hear him talk, you're like, God damn, I like this guy. Yep. Where it's like Rodgers is kind of the opposite. You I gotta hate this oh. guy. And then you watch Rodgers and you're like, Jesus, this guy's good. I always had that thought. Like, Rodgers is not my type guy. And then I watch him and I go, is this the best player I've ever seen? I know. <laughs> I know. I watched the thing where Dak saw, saw the little kid this year. And the little kid thought he was somebody else. What did he say? He's like, aren't you? He's like, no, I'm Dak Prescott. I thought he was he Mahomes. Like Mahomes, yeah. I was like, Dak is... And then watching him in Hard Knocks. The best part of Hard Knocks was just Dak. Like, he's just high level. How about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? You can always count on Middle Call for a Jimmy Johnson video. Anything goes just, well for the Cowboys. I, I, it's hard to beat that video. Even it though really I know is. it was a candlestick. Jerry's about 40 years old. Walking out. It's just a great, it's a great. Jimmy game. Johnson has more hair than the collective shave it or save it contestants. Aikman's holding like Michael Irvin's kid with a huge chewing. Massive chew. In a locker room guy, that's the NFL less than 30 years ago. That locker room is shittier than Davis High's locker room. <laughs> the NFL was a completely different world in the 90s than it is now. Do you know what year Jimmy Johnson was born in? Quick, top what? of your head, don't even think. I mean, uh, 41. Yeah, 1943. How old is he? 78. He still looks damn good for a 78-year-old, doesn't he? He looks incredible. That's what made me look. He has great hair. Do you think your hair is going to be that good, that old? I don't. I, I mean, I... That'd your dad pretty, a good hair guy still? No. But is he ever a good hair guy, like in most of your life? No. Oh, so you... Oh, yeah. You it's, they say balls. it's your mom's dad. Your mom's dad good thick, genetics? Thick, he, had, he had thick hair till the very end, yep. Israel guy? Uh, yeah. Yep. A lot of hair in Israel? Oh, yeah. It's like they're it's bald very, Jews. very hairy people. I'm sure, I mean, but Larry David. A, lot of ar- a lot of arm hair. Oh, yeah. You guys are hairy, but I'm just saying, like, a lot of you guys lose your hair. There's a great line. Uh, you've been watching uh, You've been watching Larry David? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the man asked him to pray for his father. He's like, I don't pray. He's like, well, how do you know there's no God, Larry? And Larry goes, because I'm bald. <laughs> that, was a good, that was a good line. All right, mailbag. Thanks for hanging. That turned out to be a much longer mailbag than we thought, but that's okay. You guys stuffed the iTunes reviews with mailbag questions, and we appreciate your engagement and your contribution to this content. Let's go.